It's a homeschool unit, a history unit study that we purchased through Homeschool in the Woods, the Time Traveler series, and Colonial Life incorporated with our Iroquois Indian unit study, which was where we started. With that, we used several books. Um, as you can see there, that's just some of them. Story that went along with it, Indian Captive, awesome, awesome book. The Iroquois Trail. Dickin Among the Onondagas and Senecas, if I pronounce that correctly. Another great, great story. Some of the projects that we did, we made a turtle shell rattle. The mask is False Face Society, that's their like medicine man. We did a breech cloth with using a paper bag and our paints. Jenna did a wonderful job, very bright and vibrant colors. This is our storytelling bag. That was their storytellers would come around in the winter and they would pull an item out of the bag and tell the story that went along with that bag. That is our attempt at a corn husk doll. And this is our bear claw necklace. We made the bear claws out of clay, baked it in the oven, Jenna painted it. We used the faux fur and some like jute type rope string to tie it up. Great story. Great, great, great unit study. Then we blended it in with our colonial life. Lots of projects, lots of books. Great books. Jenna's favorite were the Our America series. Um, Finn and Jenny, they are kids from present day, travel back in the past to find their parents that are lost in time, and of course Finn and Jenny are fictional characters, but the other people and places and events are true. Mary of Plymouth, The Courage of Sarah Noble, Squanto, great, great story. We had... There's 25 lessons I printed out in a folder for us. We each got a copy so that there wasn't running back and forth to the disc on a daily basis. Tons of projects. Um, you can do a lap book or notebooking. We kind of did both because there were so many different things for the different sections. This is our lap book. Again, Jenna did a wonderful job. It opens. We have our Men of Faith. Each one flips open with a little blurb that she wrote about each person. The Horn Book. Miniature version. So cute. Crops and their importance to the Colonials. Each one flips up. And again, she wrote the, her, the importance to the Colonials. Uh, Flax to linen, how they turned their flax plants into linen to make their their clothing. Little fan it fans out. It's a great little little book and explains it. This is our book of bees, which this opens. It's kind of hard to do this one-handed. It opens up and each of their little gatherings that they did, they considered a bee. Apple bee, they pick apples, a threshing bee, husking, taffy pulling, ooh, that one sounds yummy, logging, sewing and quilting, we've all heard of quilting bees, and barn and, or house raising. Just cute, nice, bring it home, hands-on type projects. Great for kids that are definitely hands-on. Then you have your little barn, things that you would find in a barn. The pharmacopoeia. You open up the little book and it has pictures of the herbs and what they were used for. 
Wonderful job, Jenna. Thank you. She did very well with this. History was our all-time favorite. We open the lap book down, and inside this pocket is the clothing of the Colonials. Each made in layers. Each one opens, and it shows the different layers of the clothing. We had the Colonial Girl, the Colonial Woman, Colonial Boy, Colonial Man. Imagine having to wear all these clothes. Oh, how hot it would be, especially here in Florida. Thank goodness we don't do that anymore. Wonderful, wonderful job she did. Then these are little pop-up boxes. The different types of houses. Let's see if I can get this for you. It tells you, like, this is the stone house, and then how they were built or what they were made of. Salt box house. Cute. She's a good artist coloring drawer. The log cabin. And the brick house. Down on the bottom of that page, it is how they made their, um, their colors. And we actually took things and tried to boil them up and dye the cotton and the yarn and the different things. Some worked, some didn't. That was our lap book. We made a game. You start off in the middle at either the uh, whipping post or the stocks. You pick five things at random. You don't know what you're going to get, but from five different shops, and you have to travel around the board and buy all the things on your shopping list. There are cards. I have them in the bag. I don't want to take them out and make a big mess. You print out the little cards, and you give them the word, and when they get close to the definition, then they get to roll the dice and move how many spaces. Fun. She has fun. She asks to play this all the time, and we made it ourselves. This, you know, if you can laminate, you laminate it to protect it. We didn't have any, so we did some decoupage glue to protect it a little. So that was our game. These are the directions for the play of the game. Uh, we also did the notebooking, some of it. She made a newspaper. She did it on regular paper, and then when she was finished, I copied it for her onto parchment paper to give it an old look. She was thought that was very interesting. Um, this is little postcards. Again, one-handed makes it difficult. She colored the different postcards. It's her storage envelope. And this one is Philadelphia. Boston, New York, and Williamsburg. She likes bright colors and colors very heavy handed. So we go through lots and lots of color pencils and crayons because she does not color softly. Here she got to weave a miniature blanket. We made a loom out of cardboard, and she, wo she weaved, wove, weaved that herself. This is a tick mattress. We stuffed it with pine needles because that's what we had to use, and she sewed it up herself. And that is a rope bed that she did herself. Very good job. Excellent work, Jenna. I'm very proud of you. Here is quilling. Oops, sorry, my paper's sticking together where you just kind of coil up and roll the papers. And she made a nice little quilling pattern. Very nice. Reverse painting. This she had a blast with. You paint on the back side of it, starting with your highlights first, and then you move on to your main color. She liked it so much she did two of them. It's her dress. The apothecary. This one was one of my favorites. I'm sorry I keep flipping the camera around. It flips open. Every bit of this is a workable part. Each one of these open. Oh no. Blue came off. Each one of these open. 
I'm going to stick glue is not all that it's cut out to be. I'll fix that for her so she doesn't know. But all those open, each one of these doors open, and again, it shows you the herb or plant and what it was used for. That one was very fun, my favorite of all the coloring projects. This is silhouette art. You would shine a light, make a shadow, and then draw the shadow, you know, trace the outline edges on the paper. This was actually her uh, American Girl doll that we used to do our shadow. Another game, this is called Nyman Morris. Instructions on the little pocket. Our game pieces are tucked inside the little folder there. Um, if you were bad, you got tarred and feathered. And she sure feathered this guy. Digging up clues, you know, when we, in the beginning we did uh, a pretend archaeological dig. And these were the different things that she would find in the different places if she were actually there. How they picked names, and she picked names in who she would name those names. A larger version of the horn book. And some things were duplicated because we decided to do both the notebook and the lap book. But there were so many things in the notebook that weren't in the lap book, and we just wanted to do it all. A Rebus puzzle. Fun. Then the handwriting. We started off, she was printing, and these are things that, um, the rules of civility and decent behavior that George Washington actually wrote himself. Each lesson had one that went with it, and as we got further along and she started to learn cursive, then we switched to the dotted line. It was actually, she traced it, but it helped her with forming her letters, and she's doing wonderfully with her handwriting. We also made, um a uh, colonial costume, but we didn't do it quite like the Indian costume. We went to the thrift store and purchased a, an adult long knee length type skirt and fixed it up to fit her in a shirt and we made the apron and a mop hat. So cute. I don't have the picture here that we took of her in it which was a real chore. If, I guess if there were some other kids involved, it would have been a lot more fun for her. She also did a sewing sampler. This was cross-stitch. I think she did wonderfully. It was her first time ever doing it. And it took her a long, long time, but she worked on it every single day and got it finished. We did a tin punch. Pretended we were a tin smith. And this is just a pineapple can that we saved. And we used a hammer and nail, punched holes in it. We put a little tea candle in the bottom, and <coughs> excuse me, it glows through. Um, there were several books not seen here that we used that we checked out from the library. Um, we, in the American Girl series, which she read Meet Kaya and Kaya's Escape, Indian stories of that time frame. Uh, we also did A Light in the Forest by Conrad Richer, that one. I recommend if it's older children because there are some pretty pretty uh, rough spots in it if you have a sensitive child. We did the Journal of Jasper Jonathan Pierce, a pilgrim boy, just to get the boy's side of the story. And that was by Anne Rinaldi. And A Journey to the New World, The Diary of Remembrance. Patience Whipple by Kathy, Catherine Lasky. I can talk. Both great stories. That was, I have to say, the best part about this whole thing was all the stories. Jenna absolutely loved them. She would ask me to read more, read more, read more. Couldn't wait to find out what happened next. It was great. Happy to say that next year when school picks up again, we're going to start off with the American Revolution. Same um, type of study from homeschool in the woods and I have several books picked out hopefully we'll be able to find most of them at the library if not Amazon here I come well I hope I wasn't too long-winded and that you enjoyed this and 
I'm telling you, it's just a blast. You'll learn a lot. She had a great time, and if you have a hands-on child, this is definitely a program you may want to look into.